Today's creativity break is brought to you by the beach. Welcome to Surf and Sand. Hey, it's Rose from the Painted Toad, and I am here for your creative break. Tonight we're painting Surf and Sand. So if you're joining me, say hi. This is your little creativity break for the night or for the week or, you know, for the month, whatever it happens to be. But I'm doing these weekly on Wednesdays. So um, you can happen anytime. It'll be a different painting every Wednesday. It's Paint With Me is, is uh, the name of the program. And if you want to get the tracers and things, make sure you hop on over to my website. And I have a link where you can sign up. And um, you'll get the tracers and reminders for each week's painting. So enough with the chit chat. Let me get started. I'm going to move. Uh, let me see here. Let's switch it down here so you can see my canvas. Tonight I'm working on a five by five square canvas. And first things first, I'm going to cut out the tracer. You could also do, um, or not do, but you could also use what am I doing with this? Okay. You could also use, um, there's graphite paper that you can get from the craft store and you can put that down underneath and trace over it with a pencil. Um, but for this one, I'm just going to cut around these cause it's just a really super simple design. I usually do the graphite paper if I have something more complicated, but this is pretty simple or you can freehand it, but I know some are not as comfortable freehanding designs like this. So that's why I have the template. And like I said, if you want this template, and if you're just watching today and, and you don't, you know, don't have, you're not taking time to do this today, you could do it later. Um, hop over to my website. It's um, www.paintedtoad.com. And you will see a link there um, on my events page for all these paint with me. And you can get on my mailing list so that you can get the tracers and the updates every week for these paintings. Okay, I've got those cut out and I'm just going to use a pencil and line these up on my canvas like so. So I'm going to have that over there and I'm just going to take and trace around this with my pencil so I can get the shape. And then the other one, now you could like, you know, if you wanted to put it in a different position, you could do that. I'm just going to put it how I had it in the design here so I don't confuse anyone. And I'm just going around the outside of this one here. And then as far as like the edges, if you want to do the edges of these, you can always take and finish like if your canvas, this particular one does have edges. Sometimes the little canvas boards I use don't have edges. But this one you can finish the curve um, and just bring it down around your edge. Now if that intimidates you, well then don't do that. Just uh, you can paint the edge something with stripes. And maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll do like a fun stripey edge. So I'm not going to worry about that. See, just changed my mind there. Always trying to make it easier for you. These should be fun paintings. They should be stress-free. Um, so I don't want you to get anxious when you're painting this. This is, should be enjoyable for you. Now, this little part here, if you really um, aren't comfortable getting that sketched in, what I would recommend is, once again, cutting around this. To save time, though, I'm just going to kind of poke a hole in here and just kind of mark where I want that. And I can kind of make a line here and kind of do that. So um, I'm just going to freehand sketch this. But if you are not comfortable freehand sketching, go ahead and make sure that you um, you can just trim around that little tong part. I guess, is that what it's called? The tong? Um, so you can do that. Here, I'm going to switch to the screen too. Hey, so you can see me because um, I'm talking to you and you can't even see me talking to you. Okay. So yeah, for this part, I'm just going to freehand sketch this. And yeah, like I said, if you are not comfortable freehanding it, then go ahead and cut it out and trace it on there. So I've got that first part there. And then this little part kind of comes around here like this. 
and then it kind of swoops up there. So we got that right there. And then this one over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to kind of poke a hole where the point of that is, just so I can get the same location, general location of where it goes. And then I'm going to use this and just kind of look and draw, move this plate out of my way, where this goes. And if you're joining me, say hi. Let me know you're here. We are painting surf and sand today. And if it's rainy where you are today, this is the perfect rainy day painting because then it just gets you thinking about the beach, thinking about the warm summer days, that kind of stuff. So, all right, there's my little flippy flops. They are all ready to go. Okay. I'm going to minimize my screens here so I can see everything at the same time because sometimes I can't see everything at once. There we are. All right, first things first, um, I'm going to come in here and kind of figure out where I want my sand to be. And the flip-flops are kind of mostly in the sand here. Of course, I'm going to have them lapping a little bit maybe because I like the blue. I love blue, so I want to make sure I get some blue water in there. And I have a couple colors I'm going to do for my sand first. Um, no, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to do my water first. Sorry. So I have some fun colors. These are some craft paints. A lot of times I use acrylics, but um, I have these fun paints. So this is what I'm going to use. You can use any shade of blue that you like. This is a darker blue. This is called Ice Blue. It's a metallic paint by Deco Art. So the metallics are... I don't know, they're kind of fun to do. And then the other one I have here is Peacock Pearl. It is also a metallic uh, paint by Deco Art. So those are the two I'm going to use. And what I'm going to do is take my flat brush here and towards the top of my painting, I'm going to just paint straight across here. You can, I don't know if you can catch, see the shininess on there. These, these metallics are so fun. So I'm starting up here with the blue, but then as I work my way down here, I'm going to add um, some of that, um, that tealy color. I'm just going to say teal because I don't want to keep saying peacock pearl because <laughs> I might mess that up and it'll be sound weird. All right, so I'm going to bring this down in here and I'm just going to, these are kind of thin, so it's really smooth going on there. It's very smooth. I like that. And I'm going to bring this right up to my flip-flops. Now, you could paint the edges of these if you want. Um, but I think I'm going to do kind of a fun edge on here. So uh, I'm going to leave the edges for now and just add in a little bit more of this teal. And then as I come along here, I'm going to just bring that right up. Now, sometimes I'll do the background first and then trace the uh, design or whatever it is I'm doing on there. But today, just to save time so I didn't have to mask this out later. I am just painting around my flip-flops. So, um, but if that's a little challenging for you, you could always paint the background first and then trace your flip-flops on and do it that way. You would just do masking. You would trace the flip-flop over the background and then paint it white and then paint it whatever color you're going to do. But I'm leaving mine white here. Okay, now that I have that, um, this is a really small painting, so this isn't going to take too long at all. rinse out my brush. I've got a little tan. Now if you want to, you could do a real bright sunny yellow here. Um, I'm not sure how I want to do this. I'm going to try the tan first and see how it goes. And if I don't like it, then I'll let it dry and I'll try something else. Sometimes that's the way, that's the way you work it. Ooh, look at that. It's like my hand is gigantic. Okay. I'm getting a little bit of this tan. I think you can see it. Yeah and a little white. So let's get some tan and white. Just a dab here. I really don't need a lot of paint because this is, like I keep saying, it's a small canvas. 
and I'm going to take some of the tan and the white on my brush. Now my white's a little bit thicker because the tan I'm using is, it's Craft Smart Khaki. So it's a craft paint and the craft paints are thicker. My white, uh, or I said that wrong. The craft paints are thinner. The white is thicker. So I'm just going to bring this in. I'm not going to come quite to this edge yet because I don't want it to blend quite yet with that. Um, but I will come back and get that later. So that is really, really light. And I think... I'm going to add some more tan in there just to darken it just a tad. There we go. Now you can actually see it a little better. <laughs> and I'm just going to come in here. Now you could always switch and use a smaller brush if getting in those little spaces is difficult with the brush you have, then just switch it out and get a smaller brush. I'm using the one I have here. I don't know, now I'm looking at this, I feel like I want to do the edge. I can't decide what I want to do. I think I'm going to do the edge. It just, it looks so cute. I don't know. I just had another idea too. Okay. Sorry, this is me going all crazy. The creativity is flowing and I don't know how to stop it. <laughs> okay. When I talk like this, you can see like the little wheels going in my head. So there's a lot going on in there. Some of it's not all uh, put together. Some of it's a little bit crazy. Create, cre uh, crazy creativity. There we go. Now, something I want to do here is I'm going to be adding a little surf here. Otherwise, it looks like these are, I guess, we, it kind of looks like they're sitting over the edge of a pool. So I want to give it a little bit of um, a look like the water's kind of coming over and lapping on that. But I'll get to that in a minute. But while this is wet, I'm going to add a little shadow underneath where... The flip-flops are while the sand is still wet so I'm taking a little bit of this dark brown this is a uh, raw umber umber brown just a touch of the dark brown don't need very much I'm gonna take a smaller brush and I'm gonna mix the dark brown with a little bit of the tan so I get kind of a that's kind of dark let me lighten it up some more Okay, that's a little better. I don't want it like super, super black here because this is a, maybe add a little bit of white. Um, this is a bright sandy scene, so we're not going to have, you know, big dark shadows. There's um, sunlight everywhere. You ever look at the beach and the, the sand just glows and almost hurts your eyes? It's so bright. So we don't want deep, deep shadows here because otherwise it's not going to look natural. All right, and then let's see, decide where your sun is shining. So I'm going to pretend that the sun is coming this way. And so the shadows are going to be kind of under here this way, just a tad. So I'm going to do this shade here. Kind of, you can stretch it out a little bit. I'm just kind of pulling here with my brush and just stretching that so it blends in with the sand that's already there and i'm going to add a touch more of this because it could be darker just along the edge here shadow is always darkest along the edge of whatever it is casting the shadow so that's something something to keep in mind I'm going to bring this here and darken that up. I think you can see the difference there. I don't know if you can see the difference or not, but when you add little things like shadows, it's really going to add dimension to whatever it is you're painting. And that's why I'm going with this darker line here because 
I want it to stand out a bit, make it look like it's actually a little 3D. There we go. Okay. So I thought I would tell you, I'm actually, ooh, that's really dark. Let me just blend that in a little bit more. Um, I am on a journey. I'm on an artistic journey. And I am working on creating more time in my life for making art. Um, creating art makes me happy and calm. Um, it's a really great stress reliever. And that's something I've had to deal with a lot on um, the last several years is managing my stress. And so one of the ways that I, I'm doing that now is I am painting and creating other things. And so that is one of the big reasons why I'm doing this Paint With Me series, um, because I want to invite you to that creating as well. That opportunity to create or an excuse to create. If I don't schedule the time, then I'm going to put it off and, and not do it. So that's, you know, doing these with you pushes me to do this. And so I'm on this journey to make more time for making art, painting, and kind of growing in in my artistry, growing as an artist. Um, some people think like, you know, artists are just born that way, but it takes hard work to be an artist. And, you know, I shouldn't say hard work because a true artist, um, you know, really loves what they do and they do what they love. There we go. Ooh, I think that looks cool. Um, so for me, growing as an artist means step one, taking time out and actually making art. So if that sounds like something, you know, you're interested in doing, if you are trying to make more time in your life for the things that you enjoy, um, tell me about it. Cause that's kind of what I'm working on as well. Sometimes I get so busy and so stressed with all the things I forget to do the things that make me happiest. And when you're not doing the things that make you happiest, then you just get overwhelmed. So right now I am not overwhelmed. I am at peace. <laughs> I'm at peace creating. I'm going to let that dry a tad here. You know what I think I could do? Let me see. The blue is already dry. But this beige is not. So rather than going over this, I'm not going to pull the blow dryer out today, but if I re really wanted to do this quickly, I could blow that dry. I'm going to let the beige dry a little bit more and I'm going to work on my flip flops. So here's the fun thing with flip flops. You can create them any way you want. Um, you can do the stripes like that were in the picture for the events. Um, you could paint them pink and put little palm trees on them. Whatever you think you want to put on those flip-flops is whatever you want. So um, that is, you know, use your own creative license, use your own deal, have fun with it. I chose to do, I'm going to do warm colors with this just because I've got the cool water. And sometimes if you do war, opposite of warm and cool colors, you get some contrast, which makes it more interesting to look at. So I was going to do a combination. Of, I've got some red here and I'm gonna get a little bit more of that red maybe two and then I also have this really pretty magenta I'm wondering if I should do light magenta or dark magenta let me see here um I think I'm gonna go with the dark hopefully it's not too close to the red I think if I put some yellow in between I'll be good it would help if I opened the bottle of paint. 
<laughs> Glad I figured that out without having to I'll sit there for a few minutes like, why is it not coming out? Um, because it's got a... It's still sealed. It's brand new paint. Okay. Brand new paint. There's some pink. And then... I'm going to use some yellow and I might even throw some orange in here because as I'm looking at this I'm like, hmm, I think we can do a lot of fun colors on this flip-flop. So do I have orange? Yes, I do. This is going to be super cute. Okay, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to do the stripes. But like I said, if you want to do something different, um, be my guest. You can do polka dots. You can do anything you want on your flip-flop design. Make it unique. Make it your own style. And I'm going to take, I have a small flat brush here, and I'm going to be painting stripes on here. So I think I will start with, uh, I'm going to start with the magenta. And I'm just going to paint the end of this. Now I've got a lot of paint on here, so I'm going to pick some of that up. I don't need that much paint. And I'm going to bring this across here. And the other one, you're also going to want to make sure that that one is the same. These should be kind of symmetrical. They're a mirror image of each other. It's a matching pair. So whatever you do to one flip-flop, do to the other flip-flop. Now if you notice some of my lines aren't perfect, but I'm not too concerned about that. I won't worry about that. Next color I'm going to do, I think I will do the orange. So we'll get a real bright orange stripe here. Ooh, I like it. Use your flat brush to its advantage. It can make a nice straight line. So take advantage of that. Okay, moving on to the next stripe. Now, the red and the pink are super close in their tone here. So I'm actually going to do the red next, just so that I don't lose that color um, when I, next to the pink. So I'm going to do red and then yellow and then the pink again. So this is the pattern that I am creating with my colors. I'm just taking my time. There's no big hurry here. Take your time, gently pull the brush across. And if if you know if you're doing stripes and it's frustrating you and like this is, you know, you're thinking this is too hard or this is too tedious, don't do stripes. Just paint it a color and put some polka dots on there. You know, don't make it harder harder than it needs to be. And, you know, if you're looking at this and saying, oh, that's too easy, well, then do something dramatic on there. <laughs> Create a really cool picture. You can, you can make this as easy or as difficult as you want to. So create the painting in the manner that you are most comfortable. These are actually really cute and fun. I think I'd like a pair of flip-flops like this. Now some of that pencil's kind of pulling into my yellow because yellow is so light, which is a little bit annoying, but I'm not too worried about it. I can go back and fix that later. If you are joining me, it's Rose from the Painted Toad and we are doing surf and sand tonight. I'm doing a little beach scene with some fun flip flops. 
and thinking about all the fun we're going to have this summer, I'm excited. We're probably going to go to Lake Michigan at some point to swim. I live near Lake Huron, but where I live, it's very rocky. So if you go to swim um, in my area, you got to wear uh, shoes on your feet, like water shoes. Otherwise, you can't walk on the rocks. It's crazy. But in the northern part, um, Lake Huron is sandy up north, and Lake Michigan is all sand. So I love swimming in the Great Lakes. I've swam in every Great Lake except for Lake Ontario. So I've been into, like, that's a thing. So if you're from Michigan, <laughs> you might know this. Like, that's a thing. We brag about how many of the Great Lakes we've swam in or we make a big deal out of it. So I don't know. Does anybody else, anybody else swim in all the Great Lakes? The only one I haven't been in is Lake Ontario. But we're thinking about taking a trip out east. Maybe we'll visit my brother. He's over in Connecticut. And uh, if we go by... Lake Ontario at some point. I am going to have to put my feet in that lake just so I can say that I've been in all five Great Lakes. There we are. All right, I'm working my way down with my pattern. Oh, and don't forget, like I just forgot, don't forget to go between your, your uh, tongs here. You got to bring that stripe all the way across. So let me do that. I forgot to do it in the other part. That's okay. There we go. I'll just go ahead and fill it right in. Not a problem. Yeah, so definitely looking forward to going to the beach this summer. Despite how sand gets everywhere, <laughs> sometimes, well, I guess when my kids were little, I worried more about that because um, they would just get sand in their diapers and just get sand everywhere. I don't know if you've ever taken a little one to the beach. It is so much fun, but it is just so much sand. <laughs> uh, now that my kids are older, it's, it's a little easier. I remember taking a trip once to the beach um, and... I don't even know why I did it. I had a newborn and that was not the right time to go to the beach. I think she was only, she was only maybe a month or two old. That was my little Juliet. She's 11 now, but, um, oh my gosh, that was just a crazy trip. I was so stressed out because I had two littles. Like if Jules was only a couple months, then like Lily was only two and Maria was only four. So I took a four-year-old, a two-year-old and a two-month-old to the beach. I would recommend don't do that <laughs> unless you have extra help. I didn't have my husband with me. It was just me. Um, and I think I went with my sisters and it was so stressful. I ended up, um, I ended up just packing everybody up cause the baby was fussy and usually she was such a good nature baby. But of course that day at the beach, she was so fussy. Um, and I just ended up bailing and I'm like, I'm going home. So we went home and I think that was probably the best decision because I was stressed. Definitely not how, you know, you think of the beach, you don't want it to be stressful. You want it to be relaxing. So, oh, I really love how these are looking. These are super cute. Super cute. Okay, what's my next color? Yellow. Kind of have to keep track of my colors here. Now the yellow up here, I might go over it a little bit again, just because the, sometimes it's a little annoying. Sometimes the pencil gets pulled in there. I don't know if you can see that on the video or not, but some of my pencil got pulled into my yellow. But I'm just going to keep, just keep painting. Just keep painting, painting, painting. Let's get some magenta.
Um, really focused here because if I talk too much, I'll lose track of my stripes and then I'll get my pattern out of sync. I used to have that happen with students. You know, they'd be working on something pattern or something like that and it wouldn't work out. They'd be like, what do I do, Mrs. Gottler? I messed up my pattern. So it's like, well, you just got to use your creativity and come up with a plan B. It's not the end of the world. Maybe you didn't plan it, so maybe you can change it into something else that's going to work. Okay, next color is red. So I posted a picture the other day of me at the greenhouse. Would you believe I haven't planted those plants yet? I bought all the plants and I haven't put them in the pots yet. I had the greatest intentions of doing so and just never got around to it. So they're sitting. Actually, I should put them out right now. Maybe I should text my husband. Put them out because it's raining. That'll be good for them. We don't have very good water here. So anytime it rains, I stick all my plants out where they can get some rain. Otherwise... My water is too salty. Oop, that got a little bit wet. So I didn't quite dry my brush all the way and it dripped. So I'm just going to take some paper towel, soak up the extra water, dry this a little bit more, and then I'll go back and fix that. There, it's okay. Almost down to the end. Yeah, I'm still trying to decide if I want to keep going with this or if I want to do more of a, it's my next color, yellow. Um, if I want to do the stripe pattern on the end. Boy, well, that is really thick yellow. I'm just going to take my finger, kind of pull that up. Way too much yellow paint. Sometimes the paint cakes a little bit on the brush and then then you got too much sometimes you want that much but right now i don't really want a ton on here i'm just trying to lay down the colors Okay, magenta. We'll do a little bit of magenta here. Sorry, that's a little crooked too. Hope that wasn't bothering you. Sometimes things like that get on my nerves. I don't know if anyone else has ever seen that. It's like a meme or something. It's a picture of this stove. And it's got the hood on the stove is offset. And it's, you know, the question is like, does this bother you? And like, people who, <laughs> who like everything, like even and perfect and stuff. Yeah, that one stresses me out. I'm like, ah! Need to get that lined up correctly. Okay. I am almost done with the flip-flop. First layer here. Now some of these I'm not going to have to do another layer. Um, it looks fine. Some of the yellow I might do another layer, and the magenta up at the top looks a bit thin, so I might add another layer up there, but some of this color is totally fine. I'm just going to bring this red down over the edge a tad. There. Okay. Let's go 
back and do a little work on the water and I wanted to get I'm going to experiment a little bit here and see if I can't get this because this is nice and dry now my sand is dry I want to see if I can get this to look um, like the water is lapping up over the edge of the sand so I'm getting a little bit of water coming up over here and I'm just taking my flat brush I'm using this teal I'm just kind of painting a real thin layer and I'm going to add a little more in there I think I'm going to add just a touch more of the blue and the teal just to darken it up give it a little bit a look here and I think I'm going to outline these I haven't yeah I'm probably going to outline them with black so I am going to bring this water up and over so it's lapping on these but um first I need to do my outline and all that so let me get a tad of white I'm going to add a little white in here and I've added the blue again just to wet the canvas and to darken up the water so I'm going to add a little bit more of the blue and the teal this has such a nice shimmer to it I love this metallic paint I wish I had some metallic or pearly white but I'm going to try something here if you're joining me it's Rose from the Painted Toad and we are painting surf and sand this is my weekly paint with me it is your artistic break I'm going to take the edge of my brush here I'm going to try something I'm going to go in like this and just bring some white back and forth now I don't know if I'm going to like this or not so if I don't like it I'll just paint over it again but you're never going to know till you try it so let's see how it looks there I like that I like how that looks I think that looks kind of cool it gives it a little texture okay this is looking a little bit eh, brush strokey so I'm going to come back here and just add a little bit more onto my sand just to smooth it out um, I don't want it to look so textury like that and that just happens with the paint sometimes it just when especially the thinner craft paints it doesn't always give you a, a real nice thick coverage so I'm just going to come back in here and smooth this out a little bit more so it doesn't look so streaky I'm using a little white a little bit of that khaki or beige if you have like a beige color okay I think that's good um, since most of this is dry I'm gonna do the tongs next we're almost done here I've really only been using flat brushes I think I did put round brush on the list but uh, I may use the round brush when we get into adding some of the foam coming in and lapping over these so I think what I'd like to do is magenta either magenta or red on the tongue part how about I'm gonna use a red there's less red stripes so I think if I do red here um, it'll just bring a little more emphasis to that particular color I'm using the edge of my flat brush it helps me kind of work in this skinny area you could use I am using a small flat brush you could use an even smaller brush if you wanted or just use the edge like I'm doing just gonna bring that here ok 
Okay. So I should tell you, I have all, I was working on my calendar today for June and July. Starting to add things into July and also August. Um, different paintings I'm hoping to do and different ideas. Is that showing up okay? Yeah. So I've got all sorts of things coming up. Um, I have a big painting coming up June, I want to say 13th and 14th. It's um, this bike painting behind me. I'll show, I'll talk about it before I leave today again, just to remind you. So if you want something that's a little larger, it's not a little bit more of a challenge, but trust me, um, you know, it, it's not as complicated as it looks. It's actually a really fun painting um, and easy to do. So that is going to be June 13th and 14th. It's two days. Um, I do half of the painting on one day and half on the next. Otherwise, we'd be here for two hours. And, you know, not everybody has that much time <laughs> to do, to devote to painting and things like that. And I get that. That's, you know, I'm busy too. I know how that goes. All right, I got the flip-flops painted in there. These look super cute. I love it. And I'm going to come back and just touch up a couple areas here now that they're dried. So I'm going to add some more yellow over these just because the pencil had pulled in a bit. Hopefully I can cover up that pencil. Sometimes it's kind of fussy about that, especially with yellow. Yellow is such a light color. Out there. I'm starting to pull some of the red in and then it starts to turn orange. Getting too eager. There we go. That's a little better. So I've got that one coming up. Um, I have, I have, I have one. I have to paint it. It's for July, but um, it's involving lemonade. So it's going to be kind of a cool uh, lemonade picture. Cool to look at. Cool to drink lemonade. Now we won't be making lemonade, but we're going to be painting lemonade in July. I am. Hopefully, you can join me. And then, um, oh, what else? I have some really fun little wood cutouts I got, so I'll be painting those. I've got some for summertime with popsicles and ice cream cones, and so there'll be a bunch of those ones to do. So all sorts of things give you to give you an excuse to take a break and create. That is that's my mission. And that's, that's, like I said, I'm on that journey, finding more time for creativity in my life and not putting it on the sidelines anymore. So let me, I'm just adding a bit more of the magenta, just because the magenta was a bit thin, so I want it to show up a bit better here. You may or may not have to do extra layers on yours. It just really depends on how thick or thin your paint is. So some of my paints were thin here and they need an extra coat. If you're using craft paints, a lot of times you might need two coats with the craft paints. Now this extra coat does, now it kind of takes away a little bit of the magenta eatiness of it. Is that even a word? Magenta eat? Okay, that's not even a word. Now I'm just making things up. When you run out of things to say and you start making them up.
there. Okay. So that's done. I'm going to take a liner brush now, a skinny. So a liner brush is like one of these super skinny ones. You can see that. I think I'm shadowy today. Uh, let me see. I might even have a smaller one than this. Ooh, that's a really small one. I don't want that one. I want something that's going to move a little bit. All right, I'm going to use this a little bit shorter. And I'm going to get some black paint here. And I'm going to do some outlining. Now, I could leave it like this, but I like to add a little bit of outline on some of these paintings. just gives it some emphasis. Make sure my liner brush is in good form. And carefully, I'm going to paint the edges. Now, if this is, you know, if you don't feel like you have a steady enough hand to do this, a great alternative is using a paint pen or um, even on little paintings like this, you can use a Sharpie marker. I'm also going to outline the little tongue too, just to emphasize it. And then we will do the edge while the black is drying. And then we'll have some fun adding a little surf over our sand. So the red is still wet, but since I'm using black, I'm not too worried about that. So I'm going to go on in here and do a little outlining around my tongue. If the line gets a little thick, don't worry about it. Some of my lines are thicker and thinner, and that's okay. Keep it keep it kind of loose. Don't don't stress about getting these perfectly even lines. If you do that, then you're going to get stressed out when you paint. You don't want to be stressed. Just relax. Let the paintbrush do the job. Just pull it in the direction you want it to go. Ooh, there we go. Okay, I think that looks super cute. I hope you do too. I'm loving the fun, bright colors. So I need to let that black dry a little bit. So while it's drying, let's have some fun with the edge of this. And I think what I want to do with the edge is I'm just going to have fun with my metallic paints here. Let's see how the, I'm going to start at the top edge because the rest of this down here is drying. Oh, it looks cool from this direction. I don't know if you can see it. Doesn't that look cool? Looks like they want to stand right up off of there and you can, you can see the shimmer. Look at the shimmer. <laughs> okay. I'm very easily amused. So what I'm going to do on my edge here is I'm just going to take the brush and I'm going to do like the dark blue. I'm going to go all the way around and just make some little dark blue stripes and I think I might be a little crooked here but that's okay this is just for fun so don't get overly concerned about perfection here because nobody's really going to go and inspect that edge So that if 
I put this someplace cute. Now this is a cute one you could just stick up on the wall in your entryway, put it on a little stand, you know, on your shoe cabinet or something, just to add a little bit of beach. It could be cute, you know, in a small, small room, like a little powder room or something. These little ones, you know, they're great for practice, but you can do lots of cute things with them. See, I was going to bring those flip-flops all the way down, but now I'm glad I did this. I like this better. I think it'll be fun. Now, if your flip-flops are still wet there on the edge, just be careful. Like, I'm close to my orange. I don't want to pull any of that orange in here with the blue, otherwise it's going to turn brown. If that happens, you just let it dry. You can always go back and fix it later. Same with the black. Be careful. You don't want to pull the black down into that, because then it'll kind of mess up your color. So sometimes if you're lucky, you can make it all the way around. I got pretty close here. Might be able to squeeze those colors in. If you're joining me, it's Rose from the Painted Toad, and we are just doing some finishing touches on this cute little surf and turf with flip-flops. I'm adding some color to my edges. Try not to get blue paint all over my hands, which, hey, if that happens, that's all right, too. If you're not getting messy, you're not having fun. Now I'm going to do teal, this shiny teal. Though it does look kind of cute blue and white. Doesn't it look cute blue and white? So you could go with that too. You could paint white here instead of the teal. But I'm going to do the teal because I like the shininess of it. And then I could go back and add white if I wanted to. To brighten up the edge even more. That actually might be kind of fun. It's the little details that make the difference. How are we doing on time? Ooh, we're almost at one hour. We started a little bit late because I was having an internet connection problems. So I'm going to wrap this up just as soon as I get this edge painted. Like right there I had painted the sand down, but I'm just going right over the sand with my edge. The sand is pretty light anyway, so the blue is covering it. If it was darker, it might be trickier to get that to cover. Almost done. Making my way around. I'm just using the thickness of the flat brush to make these little stripes. I'm going to do a little thing in the corner here, just to add a little teal, just to get that in between there. Okay. So I'm going to check and see. This is dry. And I'm going to take this teal, since I've already got the teal on my brush, and now I'm going to go over this a little bit like this, just to make it look like maybe that water is coming right up over the edge of the flip-flop, kind of lapping up over the edge. And I also have a bit of white, so I'm going to add a touch of white on there. 
I think what I'm going to do with the white, I am going to pull out the round brush and just do a little bit of white surf in here. And I'm just kind of dabbing it playing around with it a little bit. Now I know there's like probably a better way to do this. It's one of the things I'd like to learn is how to get the the waves to look real um real realistic. I'm just going to do some splashes so it looks like it's splashing up over this. So there's the surf coming in. Surf and sand. Oh, you know what? Let me pull that down. You can't even see that. There you go. You could see the one part, but as I'm moving up here, you're not able to see that surf coming in. I'm just taking this round brush and kind of dabbing and blobbing to give it a surf, surfy look here. The foam, you know how it foams when the water comes in. And take a little bit of the blue to the darker blue and just bring in a little emphasis there. Oh, that's a little dark, a little darker than what I wanted. So what I'm going to do, I'm just go back in with some more white. Blend it in a little bit, not a problem. Okay. I think it's done. I don't know. What do you think? Do you like it? How'd yours turn out? Did you do the stripes like me or did you do something totally different? I would love to see what you came up with. Um, so, I mean, if you're watching this and you came up with something and you want to share it with me, um, you can send it to me in Messenger or uh, go to my website um, and you can email it through my website or just you can email me. It's rose at the painted toad.com. Send me uh, the image that you did. I would love to see what you made. So I'm going to switch back here. Let me switch my little screens. Hold on here. There we go. Aha, now you can see me big and you can see the painting. Let me get it even here. Okay, there we go. Oh, and I got all these brushes in front of my face. Ah. Okay, so if you join me tonight, thanks for stopping in. Um, I hope you enjoyed learning the painting. I hope you're enjoying these breaks, these little creativity breaks. Uh, I want to offer you lots of opportunities for that so you can get some more creativity in your life. Um, if you're anything like me, it's always great to, um, to make things. And it just, I don't know, it just helps the stress kind of melt away. So. Um, a couple things before I go. I want to point out this one. This is the one I was talking about earlier. So I'm doing this painting June 13th and 14th, Saturday, not Saturday, Sunday and Monday, June 13th and 14th, I think 6.30 p.m. And uh, I have a template and everything for it. So you can find this. Um, if you want the link right directly to the page where you download the template and the supply list, all you have to do if you put bike in the comments, so if you're watching this, put bike, and then I will um, put that in the comments. Or you can just uh, find the link. You can find the event directly on my page. It's www.paintedtoad.com. And uh, so that's one that we're doing. Um, and yeah, I've got more plans for the rest of June. So if you want to get on my mailing list, uh, you can do that too at, the, um, at my website. And I'll get you on there and you'll get uh, weekly updates with any tracer. So like for this week, anybody who signed up for this one got the tracer with the little flip-flops. And I will be posting this on my YouTube page. So if you missed it and you'd like to paint it at another time, I have tons of these quick little paintings on my YouTube page so that you can find a time that works for you and take that time to create okay so this is rose from the painted toad and just reminding you to be creative
be artistic, and get connected at the Painted Toad. And I hope you have a great rest of your evening. I'll see you later. Bye. For more creative breaks like this one, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube page and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok.